Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to this month's Shutter Magazine article. I'm Dustin Lucas and today I'm going to be talking to you how to push the limits of light using HDR software. Now I know a lot of you are familiar with HDR, maybe you resist it because it looks photoshopped. Uh, there's no secret that it, it's using Photoshop or different programs to merge images and get more dynamic range in your images. But end of the day, your client, uh, your you know whether it's a real estate agent or a commercial client, they might want that HDR look because that's what their competitors show. That's what uh, you know they're looking online at. That's what they need. So it's best to know what's good programs to use. What's the best way to use the software? How to keep your images looking quote unquote real, even though it's having wider dynamic range, uh, sort of closer to the human experience or what you see when you're in that space. Um, so I'm gonna be talking to you about a few different programs, how to do those processes, um, and some tips and tricks. The first program, or my go-to program, is Lightroom. I usually bring most of my images into Lightroom and that's where I wanna start. So opening up our images directly into a Lightroom catalog, we can select a couple exposures to combine inside of Lightroom. So I've chosen these two hand shot images, one bracketed for the shadow details, a much brighter exposure, the other exposure going for the sky and some of those brighter details uh, in the image. So what I can do is selecting both of these, I can right click on my film strip and I can choose photo merge HDR, or as you can see, command H will give us the same option. This is gonna take us directly into the HDR merge preview software. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna generate our preview of both our images, aligning them and showing the sort of uh, HDR or most dynamic range in all the shadows, the highlights, the overall image. Once it completes its preview, Lightroom isn't too slow, uh, but not too bad for two images, right? We waited about 10, 12 seconds. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically start to do a few different things. It's gonna automatically align my images, which you want to happen, it's going to auto tone. So if I turn that off, kind of go back to my original exposure. So it's not going to do any adjustments in Lightroom to this image. I want to leave auto tone turned on. Kind of makes the image look a little over the top, a little too uh, perfect in the sense of uh, shadows and highlights and that balance. Um, and then we have this option for deghost amount. Um, deghosting is an effect when uh, multiple images are merged together and they're misaligned. So you start to have this kind of ghosting effect, hence the deghosting um, amount to remove that. Kind of creates some artifacts, some ghost-like issues. And that's what you're seeing going on with, these, uh, with this mask in here. Very familiar with that in Photoshop. It's going to show a red mask where it's applying this in my image. So if I turn off the ghosting, excuse me, the overlay, what I can do is I can start to look at the different amounts. So it's, it's showing um, a lot of ghosting in these areas here at the edge of the, uh, at the, edge of the building, how many tree branches here. If I click none, it's gonna rebuild the preview and kind of show me, and I don't have, uh, I don't have options to zoom in in Lightroom, which is a pretty big limitation uh, with using this software, just as a heads up. Um, but it's going to start to show, and I can't really zoom in to see the issues that are, uh, you know, with, with specifically with the image. I don't know if I have some uh, issues going on here um, down below my building. I don't have any options for chromatic aberration in here, which is, um, you know, typical of going on along edges where it's showing some, um, some fringing and things of that nature. So I can fix that in Lightroom later. But the uh, biggest concern, if I turn high on here, let's see if it gets rid of this section um, in this area here, once it finish, finishes building the preview, I want to see if it actually makes the adjustment where it fixes that. What it's going to do is it's going to choose one of the images and mask over the other part where it's kind of showing that ghost effect. But once this is finished, it doesn't look like it's, it did, it didn't look like it did anything there. So I guess that part of the image just looks kind of odd. Uh, might be something I Photoshop out later, but definitely looks kind of odd there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this on high, and I'm going to go ahead and click Merge. So what this is going to do is it's going to take both of these images, it's going to create a new DNG um, for me to use, and start to edit directly in Lightroom. So I still have those RAW-esque capabilities for editing. I'm going to get um, quite a wider um, range for exposure to start adjusting my images, and you'll see it brings that image, image it saves it in Lightroom, and allows me to work on it immediately. Um, as you can see, the process to merge those two images, 
total amount of time between um, generating the preview, making some adjustments, coming back into Lightroom, a couple minutes at most. Um, five minutes probably for your larger um, bracketed images, whether you're doing three, five, seven, or nine, if you're starting to go really crazy um, and covering. But I kind of covered, mo I covered most of my, um, most of my uh, tonal range in these two exposures. So now you'll notice this image behind these kind of has this perfect exposure. Exposed for the highlights, exposed for the shadows, does a pretty good job. Now what I can do in Photoshop, excuse me, in Lightroom is I can go a little bit further and I can really start to boost a lot of these areas of this image. So I can drop the whites down. Um, let's go to a single view. Now I kind of have this wide range uh, architectural shot. So I can lift my clarity, start to do my final touches, but it really allows me to get to a pretty solid, um, pretty, really solid area. So what I can do is zoom in on some of these edges here. As you can see, quite a lot of um, chromatic aberration going on here. Um, and this is something we can fix. Um, you can see this nasty purple, purple fringing. I got green going on the other side. I mean, you name it, the chromatic aberration uh, adjustments that need to be done here. Um, I can do a quick adjustment by adding that, going into manual, and start to add that effect. So we can start to see turning that on and off immediately gets rid of our uh, chromatic aberration. Obviously, I've got some more work to do there, um, but just showing you that quick effect to get rid of that. Um, kind of nasty um, watching those edges. Another thing we want to make sure is we didn't lose any detail um, with, our, with some of that de-ghosting effect. Uh, making sure that we don't have any artifacts in any of our area, but overall pretty happy with the uh, with the result in Lightroom. So let's move on to uh, our next option. So now we're ready to look at some third-party plugins in Photoshop to merge these same two images to see if we can get more dynamic range out of our images. So let's open up Photoshop, and in the File menu, we'll go down to Automate and choose Merge to HDR Effects Pro 2. Now this is a NIC software, and you'll notice that a lot of, uh, I think recently NIC announced their full collection is free. So you can go to Google, download NIC, try it out absolutely free. Um, Silver Effects Pro is there, um, there's the HDR effects, there's a lot of uh, different programs for you to use. Uh, but jumping right into the merge to HDR effects Pro 2, we can choose both of the files that we want to merge. So by choosing both of those files real quick, let's go through. So we'll go to our Originals folder, and we'll choose them out of 46, excuse me, 47 and 48. Just make sure these are the right images. It looks like these are both of the exposures for the same image we did in Lightroom. Perfect. So we're going to go ahead and select both of those, click Open. We have a few options here on the right hand side. We can do um, create smart object, which is uh, a very familiar uh, term if you use Photoshop a lot. It allows us to go back in um, and work in a non-destructive manner. I'm going to go ahead and leave that check mark so that way if we need to go back into Nick later and kind of compare our different images, make some tweaks, we have that capability. Remember, that doesn't rasterize the image, so you may be limited in Photoshop, but let's move on. So we're going to keep that cr uh, create smart objects create um, check marked we'll go to merge dialog and our next pop-up box is going to be the de-ghosting and chromatic aberration uh, adjustments and you'll notice quite a difference in ability to zoom in um, make adjustments and really start to choose um, a lot more manual and fine-tuning options um, in this panel something I really like about the HDR merge the HDR effects Pro 2 um, it really allows you a lot of flexibility with your deghosting um, and the chromatic aberration. So it's going to load both of our images. Again, uh, taking about the same time as Lightroom, maybe a little bit longer. And we go right into this deghosting and alignment menu. So right away, it's going to choose the ghost reference image. And you can see how kind of murky and muddy my image is. Um, we can choose to. Um, balance between the uh, you know first exposure and the second exposure, um, but what we really need to do is focus on these different areas. So if we click on our magnifying glass, we can actually start to zoom into those different areas. And I like to look around the tree, some of these um, branches at the top to show 
where my um, ghost uh, ghosting is. So if we go ahead and go all the way down to the strength of 20, that's the lowest amount that we can choose you'll notice right away I start to have some edging here, um, which is a misaligned image. It's a, these two exposures coming together and they're starting to um, you know, separate. This is that, that part of that area I was talking about. Um, another ghosting area that we have going on here, let's see if there's any going on around these um, tree branches, not seeing a whole lot. Um, maybe a little bit of chromatic aberration going on on these edges here. Um, but overall, not too, not too bad for the ghosting effect. Kind of, kind of hard to see what's going on in there. Um, so overall, in order to correct this, um, we can actually choose the chromatic aberration option too, and it'll show us right away uh, that purple magenta line we have going on there. But moving back to ghost reduction, um, what we can do is we can start to increase the strength. So we go up to forty percent. And it's gonna, as you can see, it's shifting our image over to the left. Same way with 60, if we go all the way up to 80. It looks like 80 corrects it. 100% might be a little much, uh, but 80% will correct it. Now what we can do is we can choose what our reference image is. So if we choose the second image as our reference, look how much of a jump that makes. Even at 80, still has a that big left edge is looking pretty bad on the tree. If I go to 100%, gets rid of it all together. Problem is, is now I'm starting to get some issues with the sky here. As you see, it's really starting to mask in the nasty sky. If I go back to my original image, still have that same effect going on there. Um, so in choosing these two options, I'm gonna choose the lesser of the two evils. I'm gonna choose the first option here. Um, with the second option, let's see. You know, in order to keep sort of a lot of that muddiness or moving that, we're going to shoot, choose this uh, second image for the ghost reference. Does a pretty good job at 100. If I bring it down to 80, and it's looking pretty bad on that edge. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that at 100. Um, pretty happy with that result there. Let's jump over to chromatic aberration. Again, um, we're seeing this nasty purple fringing here. So if we do chromatic aberration, we can fix some of that. If we go to the red side, what that's going to do is it's going to start to induce, pull out the reds. It's going to add greens. If we go to the cyan side, as you see, um, pulling out the cyans, it's going to add magenta. So the balance that we need to do is towards the red side. We don't have much of a, an issue with blue or yellow. We can probably just reset that all together, but we're definitely going to need to drop down um, remove some of that red out of there. Now, you do realize when you start to mess with chromatic aberration in one area, it's going to really affect. So if we turn this off, if we drop that down a little bit further, as we toggle that on and off, we can get rid of that pretty quick. It is going to add some issues. We might have some uh, Photoshop work to do after the fact. Um, it's difficult to get rid of that entirely. Another issue was showing that band right here. But again, dropping the to the red side to remove some of that purple. Again, to remove purple, we're adding the greens in there. Looks okay. Not too bad. If I turn off the ghosting, turn it back on, same issue here so we can see the toggle between the ghost reduction. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to stick with this for now. Pretty happy with those results. So now what we can do is we can create the HDR. And if we need to, Obviously, we don't need to brighten up our exposure anymore. Uh, but if you do want to shift the balance between your two exposures, you have that option as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do the Create HDR. And it's going to bring me into my default. So the default's going to be, uh, it's not going to be over the top. It's going to be a pretty simple HDR merge. And then I can start to choose some options. So as this is uh, merging the two exposures, you'll notice 
On the left hand side, we have a preset library. There's a lot of options there that kind of pre-built different styles for us automatically. Um, but, but bringing it in right to um, the HDR Effects Pro 2, it's a little over the top. Now just looking at this image, we can toggle with Lightroom and kind of go back and forth here. Lightroom's a little flatter, a lot more detail here than in our NIC program. So we have a little bit of work to do. As you see, we have a bunch of just kind of pushes the limits. I'm not a big fan of the uh, the different presets. I kind of keep it at uh, default and, and sort of start from there. So if we click on that, just to make sure that's the option we're on, we can start to start to work with this uh, this image. Zoom in a little bit if necessary. to see how we compare with our Lightroom image. You can see pretty good details there. Probably need to go a little bit further in our exposure, maybe even um, cut back exposure, lift the shadows, see if we can get a little more, a little more detail. Kind of match where we took the image in Lightroom, but not going over the top. We'll leave the shadows there. My window looks pretty good. Kind of blown out here. I didn't, Kind of lost a lot of options in uh, in uh, Lightroom. As you can see, it kind of kept that darker, a little more dull. So we don't need to do too much with the highlights, um, which is nice. So overall, uh, coloration kind of looks a little over the top. We look a little soft. Um, perfect, uh, you know, perfect way to add some structure in. Uh, Nick has some pretty intense looking structure to get our sky and our details looking uh, you know a little more enhanced of course we have the clarity boosted on our Lightroom image um, whereas structures processes a little bit differently um, I think overall pretty happy with the way this is looking my sky looks really nice um, especially with that uh, structure Add on there, but just kind of going from the tone compression down, right? We have some options where we can really increase the HDR effect. Um, it's going to start to look really gaudy, um, but we can kind of increase that where it's going to open up that dynamic range a little bit. Um, the method strength, take that all the way to the right to see what our difference is. Um, let me show a little compare uh, comparison. Let's see here. So we can get a little more, um, get rid of that panel. So we can kind of see our before and after. So as we brought it in here, um, what our different options are doing, this is very helpful to work you know, before and after. So as we're tweaking this and kind of getting this image, I think we went a little over the top with the Lightroom. I'm gonna take that back to its darker exposure, I think. And if we're trying to match those two, um, we have everything kind of realistic, nothing's the depth and all that. We're not going over the top with our different HDR methods. Um, kind of getting a, a little bit nicer of an image um, in the uh, NIC software, to be honest. I'm pretty happy with the way this is turning out. If we zoom in, let's get rid of our, let's go single image. If we zoom in just to make sure our tree's looking okay, um, it's looking pretty sharp. Comparison, um, Lightroom looks pretty good too. We're we're definitely flatter in this uh, in the Nick, which kind of comes with the HDR look. Um, you kind of get this flatter sense of contrast, but we can add some of that back in to fix some of that look. And I mean, overall with saturation, I haven't done anything with that. Um, it has really really taken off in this image just from the HDR merge, which I really like the coloration of the sky. Um, everything's as shot, nothing's, nothing's uh, touched on. Um, leaving the, um, you know, not doing anything with the finishing touches. I mean, you can do graduated neutral density, which is kind of cool. So if you want to um, dark, you know, brighten or darken your sky, which, you know, a lot of times you get the, um, you, you darken the foreground to get, um, a little bit of brighter sky to kind of give you know give the image a little more of a of a finished look which is common uh, you know not particularly my taste um, but it does give it just a little bit of a finishing touch you can see that kind of difference between how the um, 
foreground and the bottom looks a little bit off and you can kind of you know swap that up just to make the image a little more interesting um, you know it's a nice option as well as adding vignettes but I think I'm pretty happy with the way this image turned out overall um, I think we're ready to move on um, and check out some of the other softwares so now that we've merged our image with Lightroom and Nix merged to HDR let's do it with one of the um, you know, more popular programs, Photomatix. Uh, Photomatix Pro specifically, version 6. Um, I downloaded a trial version to show you the same images taken through this software, the capabilities of what we're, where we can get um, to really push this image with some of the tone mapping options um, within Photomatix. So um, right out the gate, what we need to do is uh, we'll load our photos um, the same way. So we're selecting those in our originals folder. We'll get to those two files. And our two files, the 47 and 48, I'll select both of those. And we'll load them into the Photomatix Pro software. So right away, we're taken to the, um, we were selecting the two files. It's going to show us all the different settings and everything. Um, you know, nothing too crazy about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, Merge Options. Now, it's going to have some uh, different options where we're not able to see our image. As you see, it's not anywhere here. We're just kind of sh um, choosing these options blindly. Uh, but the default settings are great. Um, Align source images, automatically going to do that. Um, maximum shift is kind of all these options, like I said, left at default. Uh, it's going to give us the option to remove ghosts. Um, it's going to reduce some noise, which is really nice. Um, shouldn't have too much going on. It's shot at ISO 200. Um, it's going to reduce chromatic aberrations. Um, we'll get to that. Uh, the different options it's going to do, uh, leaving the uh, raw conversion, because of course in Photomatix, and like Nick, it's going to convert the file from RAW um, into a rasterized image, so most likely a TIFF uh, for Photomatix. So uh, we're going to go ahead and choose um, Align and show uh, deghosting. So it takes us into the next window. So far, so good. Pretty quick at uh, converting and merging both the images. Again, I'm working with two. It's going to be quicker than some of you working with three, five, seven, or nine bracketed images. Uh, but we have pretty wide range with just the two exposures as you can see these were both handheld so it's really going to test that alignment software in all these programs um, you know if you have a tripod if you have the time to light a space um, those are things that those are luxuries a lot of photographers don't have or your real estate agents not going to let you stay in the um, different houses or commercial spaces for four hours to light those um, pretty spaces sometimes you got to just do the bracket exposures uh, pick your good dynamic uh, angles and move on. So um, pretty quickly here, we can choose um, base image. Um, you know, which image we want to choose as the base for the deghosting. Um, so we can uh, zoom into this image as well, like before. Something you will notice, and I don't know, um, I apologize for not having the, you know, all the answers all the time, but, uh, you know, the fragmented edges here, I don't know if it's any different in the full version. Um, but it's kind of an issue where I'm zoomed in at 100%. Clearly, you know, my we were looking at the uh, my image in the uh, Nick software, and I can get zoomed in at like you know actual pixels. And here, when I'm zooming in, you know, I, I get I get fragmentation, so it's really difficult to see chromatic aberrations, see where the ghosting is going on. But in this image, I don't have any ghosting issues, or at least that's not what I'm seeing. Um, going over to the right hand side. I'm not seeing a whole lot of misaligned images. The chromatic aberration is automatic in here, so it's not really giving me options for that. Uh, so in terms of deghosting, turning this on, I'm not seeing a whole difference, uh, much of a difference actually between these uh, between these exposures. So um, I don't know if that's just photomatics. Uh, processing it just does a better job of alignment uh, but there's definitely not any ghosting going on or at least not that I can see um, a good spot would be to check these kind of annoying branches coming out of the top here but I'm not seeing any fragmentation or excuse me seeing any ghosting I'm seeing a lot of fragmentation with the pixels um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this off for now um, it's gonna do some automatic deghosting um, we have selective options um, not really interested in doing um, any of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that and go back to automatic and just get rid of that altogether. So the automatic deghosting, like I said, I'm not seeing much. 
um, in this image. I could turn my brightness up if that's going to help um, show the deghosting, but I'm not seeing any in this tree. So again, let's move on. We'll click OK. So if it's the alignment software, as I'm seeing already, does a better job than Lightroom and Nick. Might have just been luck of the draw. Again, these are handheld shots, pretty close in exposure, but there was definitely some movement um, you know, at capture. So opening this up into, uh, into the software, it's very rich. I mean, it's really pulled in a lot of detail in my um, in this area here, uh, which is quite nice. Um, so it's showing me um, automatically that chromatic aberration issues that are going on here. Not super happy with the way that turned out. I mean, these are looking, this is looking pretty, pretty bad in some areas. I mean, that's more chromatic aberration than, than ghosting. But uh, so far, this is not giving me a very, a very good run at Photomatics. Um, so let's, uh, you know, we can go undo, we can go back. Um, I don't really have any options to take, um, you know, to move a step back after I've done the deghosting. So we might need to take this image back into Photomatics. Man, it does not do a very good job. So let's, let's, um, we'll go ahead and X out of this altogether. And we're going to reload those raw files and see if maybe we can add some ghosting, add some, um, see if we can get rid of that because. That was looking pretty bad for this image. So we'll go ahead and reduce chromatic aberrations. That's automatically chosen. Doesn't really give us any options for that, which is limited at best. Uh, but converting our files, going back into the ghosting option, we'll turn it up to medium and see if it fixes some of that. Again, it looked like chromatic aberration. So if adding a medium amount of deghosting doesn't fix those areas. It's going to be Photoshop to the rescue and adjusting that kind of limited when you're outside of the camera raw engine, which we won't be able to go into, um, you know, as well. But um, let's turn our deghosting on medium. We'll go to 50 and we'll click OK. So as it's merging these two images, go back into the tone mapping option. I mean, overall, the tone of the image looked really good. I um, was pretty happy with it, again, to give you an idea of where we're at with Photoshop, um, and specifically the HDR Effects Pro. As you'll notice um, here, while that's loading in the other end, um, smart, uh, smart Objects giving us the ability to go back into uh, the NIC Effects Pro 2. So by clicking on that, we have the ability to go back and forth with those softwares. So as that's loading, let's see how Photomatics is doing. So let's zoom into our image here. Man, that's looking really bad in the chromatic aberration. So, um, kind of a kind of a loss for the chromatic aberration fixing. I mean, it's really highlighting our image. Um, as you can see, we don't have any options in this panel to fix that. Um, and as far as I'm familiar with the um, photomatic softwares, we don't have the ability to fix all that chromatic aberrations. Looking pretty bad. Um, overall so it's not something that is going to be read by these images as I'm taking them into um, Photomatic so let's move on so we have um, our different uh, toning options here um, zooming in to this image starts to get a little noisy underneath of that section let's get rid of the compare As we can expect, it's going to get noisy underneath this overhang. Kind of looking, you know, really noisy there. You know, overall, coloration is really good for uh, this image in Photomatics, but I'm really not happy with the chromatic aberration as well as we can go back to natural, kind of gives the image. Um, Kind of pulls down a lot of that kind of nasty uh, 
that nasty chromatic aberration. So we have, as you notice here, these detail enhancer. These are the different looks. Um, so you can't choose detail enhancer and then do something with the contrast optimizer. These are the different kind of presets or panels, um, uh, sort of pre-built options that you can do. These are the, obviously all of your, um, all of your presets. Um, so we can do the balanced option, the realistic. Um, the realistic option, we still have the chromatic aberration, the natural. So if I go into detail enhancer, the chromatic aberration isn't as bad, but we can start to move around um, our different options here. We have the natural lighting adjustment, the natural plus, medium, surreal. It's where it starts to get really stylized. You have a bunch of different lighting options in the photomatics as well. Uh, tone balancer. Um, let's see here, strength. So we start it back out with the realistic and we can boost some brightness to give us a little more uh, detail in the shadows here. Um, just to kind of compare with the NYX software, I think it's a now that's getting a little over the top. You see how kind of flat our image got. Um, I hit cancel. Not sure what happened um, with our with the effects that are going on there. Um, but the difference between what we have here in the Nick software, and we can brighten up our image a little more in the shadows. We can adjust the lighting to give us a little more boost. It does a little better job with the um, with the sky and the coloration, I will say that. Uh, but it, just kind of making some quick adjustments here. I don't want to do too much with the lighting. It's going to micro contrast. Move the white clipping down. We don't want that brought up so high. So if we bring up the brightness boost and the lighting it's going to help with those shadows. The white clipping we can take down to make it to where it's not as not as bright. But you see the richness and contrast that's going on in the photomatics image. Um, it's quite nice. So um, if we bring this image into our next panel, so if we say we're happy um, happy with this option, it's a bit dark. Um, where we're at, which we can brighten up and do a little more work in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and hit finish and allow this image to render and it'll take us to the straightening and sharpening options. So as you see we have the Photomatix uh, watermark here, uh, not hiding the fact that I'm using the free version or the trial version, excuse me. Um, I can add a lot of sharp uh, sharpening here to my image as well as I can do uh, cropping and straightening. So if I want to start to fix those verticals, I can. The only downside is, is it's going to start to crop my image, but we have kind of an interesting feature here to fix those lines. Um, again, I, not, uh, not going to use this software to fix my vertical horizons. I'll use Photoshop to do that. But at this point, we can, um, you know, we can take some more um, highlights and more, add some contrast options, which is quite nice. Um, so if I want to add a, add some more contrast back into those areas, if I made the image too flat, um, which is quite nice. I'm pretty happy with overall the way this looks. Pretty natural, pretty realistic. Um, kept a lot of my details in the sky. Overall, very happy with the uh, with the photomatics option. With the chromatic aberration issues aside, I'm gonna go ahead and click done. Now we can save this image. Um, we can save it out back to our desktop. And we'll call this the Photomatics. And once we save our image, as you see, it saves it as TIFF. And now we have it uh, ran through Photomatics and we're ready to move on to the next option. Now that I merged my two images in the Photomatix Pro software, I'm ready to look at a single image and see if I can pull the same dynamic range out. I'm going to open up Capture One 
and try and get the darker exposure to match the photomatics dynamic range merged image. So by starting out editing this, I get stuck in the details of the shadows. As you can see, I really tried to pull out a lot of details in my original raw exposure to try and meet that dynamic range in the photomatics. Where I fall short is certainly this level of clarity and sharpening that's going on in the underhang here. Um, I can create you know, more of a dynamic effect with structure to increase that on this image, but overall, I'm just losing that the ability to meet that same that same level of clarity just in those in those shadows but overall the uh, capture one image looks pretty good um, from a single exposure trying to pull out that same level of uh, level of detail but um, but yeah just real quick that's the where we're following short here let me zoom in kind of show you what I'm talking about so that the details look pretty good here as we zoom into the photomatics, there's just a different level of, of um, how it's rendering the uh, sky behind and just how, how it's lighting up underneath here. I just I can't get there without doing brush work or um, you know working. I have the shadow uh, recovery pushed up really far in Capture One. I have a curve turned on here to give me um, to give me a little more dynamic range, which I'm not able to get. Um, I pushed this image in the levels panel as well to really allow myself to get um, you know, a little more detail in the shadows. But overall, um, Capture One does a pretty good job. Um, but let's move on to our, uh, our next option. Now that we have our image exported out of Capture One, we're ready to use a program called Intensify. Now this is a third-party plugin in Photoshop which lets you take a single exposure like the one we worked on in Capture One and start to apply some tone mapping applications very similar to the HDR software that we were using previously. Let me show you exactly how it works. So in Photoshop, we can choose in our filters, we have the MacFun software, Intensify Pro, uh, Pro plugin, excuse me. Once it opens this image up, it's gonna allow us to start to choose presets, we can do some adjustments to those presets, we can save the presets, a lot of flexibility in this program, a lot like the Nick merge to HDR effects Pro 2 software, um, but Intensify takes some of the editing a little bit further and does a little better job. So this is our original image as it's opened in Photoshop. and We can start to look at our different presets. Now I have a few different favorites that I've already chosen, like the Detail Extractor, which is just going to sharpen up our image, kind of make it still look a, you know, a little more real and a little more photo, um, photo-esque rather than looking too HDR. The Dramatic is way over the top, <laughs> um, but it does a pretty intense uh, edit, kind of creates a little bit of haloing and glow. I don't like that too much. There's the pro quality that just kind of pumps our image up a little bit. I like the difference between that and the detail extractor. Um, pretty subtle adjustments. I have a universal adjustment, um, which just kind of boosts everything up, calm day, um, lo-fi detail, some of these other presets that work um, you know, for some of the other, some of the Im other images I'm working on. Um, but the pro quality really lets me take the image um, and, and work on it a little more. So um, just showing the before and after, kind of taking this image through, I kind of to show that where, where we've gone from. Um, we can click on our adjust panel and really start to make some, um, you know, some adjustments. We have some pretty similar um, you know, language and different tools in here, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows. Um, we can boost the shadows up even further if we want um, to help out in our image. Um, highlights are working out pretty good here. We have the pro contrast. We can increase that. Um, you know, start to really reduce down those highlights specifically. We can work in the midtones, um, boost up some of those options as well. Structure, uh, structures are really great, a uh, really great tool in this program as well. We can really increase that. I'm going to go in, back into my single image so we can start to see. Um, some real enhancements of this tool. Um, so as you can see, we have a bunch of options in uh, in this Intensify program. And you can see we're really starting to get um, some options here. Let me turn this back up. Clicked off that for a second. Let me go back to my presets, back to the pro quality, back to adjust to make sure that we didn't click off anything. 
Uh, we can increase the micro adjustments uh, for the sharpness. Let's see. It's before and after. Zoom in here a bit. See kind of what we're working with in our detail. So if I increase that micro sharpness, wow, it gives us some really intense um, sharpening here, which I like a lot. Very similar to our Photomatics image. Don't think I have an option to open that one up separately. Once we take it back into Photoshop, we can start to compare. If I can really increase that micro sharpness uh, that we were wanting out of um, that we were wanting out of Capture One. Um, let's see here. I keep losing my preview before and after as it's generating. Let's make sure that the uh, image. So we can see how much detail is coming into this. Um, any haloing that's going on, which I don't have too much here, but it's going to kind of get rid of any uh, any haloing if there is any involved. Let's click here to see if it's giving me any uh, any issues. I don't see any. Before I had some options down around there, um, leaving that at the uh, at the option it was at. So it's just giving me a little more sharpness, a little more. Um, a little more detail definitely in these uh, as you can see it's rendering now uh, a lot more detail in my uh, in my shadows it's kind of waiting to load every time I move and I click so as we uh, as we go through these different options here I mean there's quite a lot of um, adjustments we can make in the details specifically for like clarity um, the structure which we have different uh, different options for structure but really increasing the uh, you know the next level editing for our image um, just with uh, some presets and changing some options here um, specifically our image I can increase the shadows to give us a little more recovery in this area as well so I am going to zoom out pretty happy with the way that's looking overall so if I want to take this image as you can see it's uh, taking a little bit to load I'm gonna go ahead and click apply And since we've opened this image up, we're working in a, a PSD. It's going to apply this right on top of our file. So once it opens back up into Photoshop, we can start to compare um, compare these different options. So once it applies our intensify section, you see it's um, you know you're you're working on a single layer, so it flattened everything together. Um, if I undo that one step and I right click convert to smart object that gives us a little more flexibility and working in a non-destructive environment let me show you exactly what I mean so once I create a smart object here which you can convert an already rasterized already opened image to a smart object that just gives us the flexibility of now applying the intensify pro plugin which we already applied our adjustments and it remembered as the last setting that we made in our filters drop down so what it's going to do is it's going to apply those adjustments. Well, actually it hasn't. So um, if we go to the Pro Quality, it's already going to sharpen our image up. We're going to go and make a few of those adjustments that we had done before. So I'll grab some micro sharpness um, as that loads on our image. Um, add a little bit of structure in the highlights. In the midtones, push that up a little bit further. Again, this is going to be a more photorealistic. It's not going to push the image too far, um, but just to show you the capabilities of Intensify, let's lift the shadows up a little bit more. And I'm going to cool this image down just a bit. It gets a little warm. Kind of show it before and after. get warmer well we'll leave it like that so now that we're ready to open up this image we'll do a little bit of contrast in the highlights add some of the midtones and shadows and I will leave shadows out so what I can do now is apply this and it's going to apply the filter see what happened here well let's try that again 
So going back into our Intensify Pro plugin, applying that filter on top of the image. I'm going to show you that you can have a smart filter so you can toggle that on and off. Go back into the um, go back into the software if needed uh, to show you the different options. So real quick, presets, pro quality, adjustments. We're just going to increase the micro sharpness a little bit further once it makes that adjustment. We're going to click apply. Probably have too many images open in Photoshop. Probably causing my computer to run a little bit slower. Possibly the plugin not to run correctly. But once it processes this, you'll see that we have a smart filter listed below our uh, base layer. And we have the ability to turn that on and off. So we're working definitely in a non-destructive area now. So. Um, that's what I have for Intensify. Now we're ready to move on to some final touches with our image. Now that I have my smart object open, after applying the Intensify uh, Pro plugin, I can start to make some final touches by transforming the image and fix some of this leaning building uh, distortion. So what I like to do is create some grid lines here that I can drag out from my rulers panel that can actually allow me to you know, start to straighten this building out. So I just create a few just so that way I can line some of these corners up, get this building a little more straight, but also not distort the building too much. And just fix some of that wide angle um, lens distortion along with some of the leaning building effects. So I'm gonna show you how I like to do that. So after I've created a few layer adjustments, let, let's say I um, after I have you know, brought this image in, I wanna brighten up the um, light tones, and you know, for instance, open up the shadows just a little bit more to make this image a bit brighter on my screen. So now that I have this layer adjustment along with my smart object layer, I can choose Shift Option Command E. What that does is it creates a composite layer for me. What does that mean? Well, it takes everything in this image, flattens it, and rasterizes it into its own separate layer. So now I can work on a separate completely non-destructive layer to start doing this distortion and manipulating effect. This is what you want to do last once you've done all your toning, all of your uh, more your heavy um, heavy lifting. This is going to be for like pixel manipulation, like cloning, fixing some of the buildings and things like that in the background. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So what I like to do is go into edit and start messing around with the transform options. So real quick I can do skew which is a great transform option to really start to straighten out this uh, building. So I like to zoom out a little bit and I want to get this vertical line here a little more straight. So I can hold shift, click on the lower left hand corner and do just that. It's pretty simple. I can zoom in on this image if I need to make sure my lines are looking pretty good. Uh, that might be a little too much. So we can take this back almost to there. Again, we can kind of zoom in. I can do Command-1 to get me at 100%. Still not there. Make sure we're kind of pushing this image a little bit further. I'm going to do Command-1. Um, could be a little more straight, but pretty close um, overall. So uh, zooming back out. I can now choose to mess with some of the other parts of the building. What I like to do is use the per, uh, perspective skew for that. But now that we kind of got this first vertical fixed, um, we can do some other options here. You notice that we can um, start to stretch the building a little more this way, which will help um, create make these um, converging lines here look a little more even. Um, we have some options where we can make the building lean even more um, up top, which helps um, with some of those vertical lines. But let's just stop where we have it there and we can just kind of toggle on and off and just show you the difference between that one little adjustment and where we were at before. Um, helps the building look uh, a little more squished, but doesn't really distort it too much. So that simple adjustment, just fixing that one vertical line can really help out. Now we can take this to another level, open up the transform tool and use perspective. So perspective is gonna allow us to really start to manipulate um, how this image is starting to look vertically. So we can really fix those vertical lines if we want to go over the top and get it to look a little more manufactured than it, than it does in reality. Um, we can stretch out um, this front top here. So we can get those lines looking a little more um, a little more even, a little more straight up and down. I don't want to go that far, but we can definitely fix 
um, where we were just a little bit. So bringing that perspective back in, I'm going to take it back somewhere in there. Now you'll notice that I want to get my roof line lined up a little more. We can do that as well. Um, we can shift this, that side of the building up, um, as well as kind of getting those roof lines lined up a little more. Again, we don't want to go over the top, but we want to make this this uh, image look a little better than it than it did. You're going to notice that we're going to start to have a lot of issues with some, uh, it looks like we're going to need some cloning going on here. Um, but you can kind of see where we've taken our, our image and really fixed a lot of that skew um, in it. So those are just some things you can start out with. Um, next, I'm going to have to work into cloning and fixing some of that up so we can work into the cloning side. So now that I have my image looking a little more, um, a little better perspective, um, you know, than it was originally, um, kind of showing with it turned on where our building looks, you know, a little more better in scale and doesn't look so distorted. Now the building where it was before, you're seeing how many flaws it had in it. Um, some things to think about now are, you know, how we're going to clone this area out. What do we really need to do? Well, I like to start with the layer mask. You know, the 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 parts of the sky um, and things like that underneath, um, we might be able to just paint back in. Um, it could be just be as simple as that. So instead of cloning and changing all of these all these uh, different pixels and adjustments, I like to start with with uh, something as simple as a layer mask. So um, I don't want to get too far into uh, cloning and these things, but some of the some of the cleaning up aspects of this image can really help it um, really help it look you know, good for the lack of better words, um, and, and clean up some of these areas. So going in here, I'm just going to paint out a lot of these uh, distortions and adjustments that we made. And of course, we want to probably drop the hardness down on our, on our image. Um, but a lot, of the, a lot of the distortions going on out here, we can fix really just by painting in um, where we were before, like I said. We can get our building is going on there. So the more we kind of paint out and kind of zoom in um, and, and fake some of this, some of these areas in here um, to really help out, get rid of that. Kind of have to be careful, um, you know, where we're going. But, you know, if we kind of increasing. Some of the clouds here aren't as much of a as much of a concern for me. If I, we just kind of move with the hardness. Of course, I'm. You can hear my mouse clicking away. Um, obviously, if you have a Wacom tablet, you're uh, better off making some of these adjustments. But just kind of fixing some of these areas. Not. I'm not spending a whole lot of time, um, you know, focusing on that right now. But we can. We can kind of get the gist of getting this image back to where it needs to be just by um, using the layer mask to do that. And that's really going to help out um, with our image overall. As you can see, uh, it doesn't look too bad with, uh, with maybe cloning that tree out. You know, it's a double tree. It looks a, it's a little, uh, looks a little sketchy over there, but, um, you know, overall, I'm not too upset about the way that this turned out with just using the layer mask and not have to do any cloning again I'm doing the same thing here and I might have to you know I might have to work in some cloning and that's okay so I can do a um, you know I can do a blank uh, blank layer make it uh, clone mask tool, current and below, and I can go in and if I really need to get rid of you know, some of these other areas, well, we don't want to go that far, um, I can and of course I've gone in and masked these areas out so I can't really make that adjustment there, let's throw that out. Make 
sure we're painting on our mask here. So as you see, we spent a lot of time going through, and um, this area here is going to have to be cloned, um, which is fine. We'll just have to make that adjustment above. So if we create that new mask, let's create a new layer, actually. Start to just clone in. All of these areas we can get it looking pretty close where it needs to be again this is much brighter than where we were we can work with that layer mask again cloning is going to be more of a pain sometimes than the layer mask and vice versa. So you can use use your different options uh, for cloning that out. We could brighten this area up realistically um, and fix that all together. So um, overall, just making sure when you're making those adjustments um, and kind of showing the overall um, how much of a kind of jump we're going into. Um, it's definitely going to help out with some of those final touches. But overall, um, you know, the differences between the programs, certainly want to compare those. Um, just the final touches in Photoshop, certainly want to make it your, um, your last um, choice in editing. Uh, but let's move on to the results of uh, all the different programs. Now that we've merged all of our images and used all the different programs, let's start to compare and see which ones rendered the best result. So looking at our first image here, this is our Lightroom um, edit, which is pretty good. You know, it was a pretty quick program, minimal uh, adjustments, not a whole lot of uh, custom adjustments really that you can do uh, for a ghosting or chromatic aberration. Um, you had some quick settings, pretty uh, overall pretty satisfied with the edit. Of course, the highlights are a bit bright. This might be this needs to be toned down a bit further in Photoshop, things like that. But um, overall, Lightroom had a pretty good. Um, Pretty good edit. The um, the Nick HDR effects, and I'm going to toggle back and forth between these. This one really started pulling out some of those details and a lot of mid tone, um, a lot of mid tone contrast, and just allowed the dynamic range of the image to open up a little bit wider. So I I really liked the interface of the Nick software. Um, there was certainly a lot more deghosting options that we had. Um, the image cleaned up quite nicely. Um, overall, but you know, with the Nick software, it's free to try out. Um, you know, it's pretty good overall. You know, moving on to the Photomatics, as you can see with the uh, watermarks here, pretty big jump in tonality and just detail. Uh, the Photomatics stays a little truer to color, I think. Um, the Nick software got kind of flat and really looks HDR esque. I think it needs, uh, you could probably do some pullback on the. Um, on the overall effects and the HDR method and strength, things of that nature. But the Photomatic set, it looks really good. Um, I think clarity and structure is something to be great. If they added into that software. I mean, I sharpened this image up quite a bit, but it's something I'd still need to go back and, and apply something um, like Intensify on an image um, to really give it a little more clarity. And you can see the big difference between the Photomatic's image and my Capture One edit that I exported out and took through Intensify to just do kind of a quick, clean edit. You can see how much sharper it is, especially the, uh, you can see our 1500 sign. That's something that the Photomatics lacked on. Um, the Nick image, just as you can really see the difference between um, how that jumps from really flat and kind of gray and um, almost muddy um, in comparison to our um, single exposure, edited in a raw processor, taken into Intensify, really clean edit overall. Very happy with the Intensify um, software. But overall, you know, if you're merging multiple images, or you're, you know, you're shooting to bracket, or you have a single exposure, you know, understanding, uh, I think 
underexposing your scene or exposing for your highlights, it's going to be a little more helpful to bring those shadows out versus if you blow out those details, they're gone. Um, something to think about. Um, but at the end of the day, try out the different software, what works for you. Your client's going to have, you know, maybe your client wants, uh, you know, an HDR look and you don't have time to do the bracketed exposures or even know what that means. Um, you, know, you can focus on single images. These uh, newer cameras really allow you to pull a lot of dynamic range out. But in the end, um, you know, the, the results for uh, the different programs are, are certainly there. I mean, there could be a lot more tweaking going from our Lightroom, which is um, real simple, has a lot of contrast in it. Um, Lightroom is still a pretty big go-to for a lot of HDR. Um, if you're doing real estate photography, it's, might as well just use that. I mean, you're already editing in there. It's great for organization. Uh, the Nix pretty good uh, for stepping it up not super satisfied with those results photomatics pretty great software still limited um, to some of the features on there the automatic chromatic aberration was a was a big miss um, you know with their software uh, but overall very happy with intensify um, in the end um, see what you guys uh, you know what you guys get uh, let me know if you have any questions certainly I'd like to see any results and uh, tune in for uh, next month's mag thanks